These jockeys are fearless. These jockeys are everything an athlete would want to be, aspire to be. And these jockeys work harder than probably many of the athletes that we know and with a lot less of the recognition. To say to the average person, like, what does it feel like? It's, the, the power underneath you is undescribable. If I could put that in a jar and sell it, I'd make millions. It's epic. It's just raw, organic power and desire. When I pass the wire by fast pace, I'm always feeling extra emotional from the inside. I'm never nervous, never scared. You just go out there with all the confidence in the world. It's a, it's a sickness, actually. We all have the same sickness. The sheer physics of it, pound for pound, there's no stronger athlete in the world. You get like this feeling of accomplishment. I can't really explain it, but it's just, it's like a drug. You, come, you just want to do it again and again and again. The mechanics of a jockey when they're riding a horse is extremely interesting to watch, aesthetically especially. You're looking at someone who is much tinier than the horse, and you're looking at the need for balance. And you're looking at their toes in boots, in these little stirrups, and then you'll see once they get into stride, and if everything's okay, you're gonna see them then looking very still on the horse. These guys have phenomenal body awareness uh, when they're on that horse because we, sometimes as lay people, we don't recognize, they're not sitting on the horse. They're balanced on their toes and maybe pinching the horse a little bit with their knees, doing 60 kilometers an hour, two inches from another horse doing the same thing. So that body awareness and proprioception, as an athlete, these guys are underappreciated. As they go to the wide, Rougier on the outside, Rougier has won. And with the fourth win of the program and the feature of the day, stakes winning rider, Kazushi Kimura. I'm always try to figure the character of the horse and they just, you know, like the same as a human, sometimes gotta be the conversation to get comfortable, right? I'm doing the same as the horses. And I think she's better on the ground. Yeah, she, so she, she ran good on the ground. Yeah. Those jockey racing career, it's 80 percent is full and the 20 percent success. So always I'm regretting and just homeworking to what can I do for improving the next race. I like to do all the time and just after races for sure I'm watching the replay and just try to improve for the next race. And if those races is working for the next time, I feel like a more kind of like I nailed it. KK, she's, he's humble. What a good guy, you know, he, he rides winners. Um, Getting to the top is the easy part. Okay, it's not easy, but staying at the top is way more difficult than getting there. And he stayed there for so long, so you have to take your hat off to him. And he hasn't let success get to his head. He's so calm and collected, and he's a very humble guy. We um, valets, we take care of their equipment, kind of cater to them. And then we look after their, their equipment, make sure it's safe, get it ready. Whatever weight it is, we get the, the saddle they need get it ready, go and, you know, check their weight at the scale. Uh, we get all their silks and stuff before the race day starts, so they're all hung up and ready. We change their helmets and goggles so they're clean and they match the silks, and we're like their, their work wives, you know what I mean? Yeah, we, we spend more time with them than they do at home. It's the ones we have at Woodbine, the valets, they have been with those riders for a long time, and the riders will pay them uh, for their work and it is a very important role and it's almost almost like a psychiatrist in a way that you know uh, of having a good day they're going to hear great things a bad day they might be on the receiving end of you know the jockey's frustration but uh, they have a very important job and, and i know you know the, the people that do it they do it extremely well i gotta focus to every single race and they just Otherwise, when I coming back, I just want to be everything smooth. My ballet is a Tyler. Tyler is always fixed for me and just to try to be everything comfortable before I head out to the race track. I'm always thinking about how to win the race, how to be comfortable with the horse and just connecting with my company, which is the horses, right? And if I feel like having good connection is feeling so amazing and just feeling like I can do whatever I want. If I didn't have a good connection with the horse, it's tough to, you know, tough to win and tough to 
getting comfortable between the laces. So, yeah, but when I get on the horse, I'm always try to be uh, confident and just, I feel like uh, I'm get on the best horse and uh, I'm a best jockey, just try to mind control. He is so dedicated to what he does. He is so intense, so dedicated, and he's sharp, and yet he's so friendly about it. But you don't know, he's quite a competitor. He rides hard, he knows exactly what he's riding, who he's riding it for. He's on time, he's on the ball. Um, it's just great. When I first met Kazushi, he didn't have a jockey's license, and he didn't speak any English at all. Uh, jockeys here to get their license have to write a written test, and they have to get 85% to pass and it's in English and so you know he had a lot of work a lot of studying to do not just to read the rule book but to learn English and read the rule book. It comes to being a jockey it really is all about teamwork they can put those different colored silks on and it's them and the horse but before that happens you have the trainer you have the owner and then they have their agents. In horse racing a really good jockey wins at 20 percent that means they lose 80 percent of the time and with any professional athlete, when they're losing, they're not happy, you know? And, uh, you know, they need someone as a sounding board to bounce questions off of, am I doing things right? What did I do wrong? And you're there for them for all of that. Jordan's like my best friend. I tell everybody he's my big brother. Uh, we break down every race. Um, we go over everything about the horses. We go over replays and we talk about what I can change and and what I need to fix and what I need to learn. Every jockey's day can be different. Um, sometimes you will have one or two mounts um, and it could be in the last race. So you're coming into that room and you might have to wait and then get a chance to do more of your homework. Just soak in the races. Uh, and then there's others that could be riding seven to eight times in a 10 race cart. It's all mental. Uh, you can you can be the winner in the first race and in the second race you can be the worst rider. You come in, you're hot, you're sweaty, you're tired, you can't eat or drink because you have to make wait for the next race. You try and clean yourself up a bit, come check for the next race, put your clothes on, get right back out there again. It is a grind, it's the same thing repetitive. Uh, horse after horse after horse, but you have to keep your, um, your smile on because you have a new set of owners or trainers to say hello to. It is so physically demanding when you can't eat or drink, but to go out there and to ride every race and ride it hard and try hard for every owner, it, it is a grind. Hello, Alison. Hi, Ryan, how are you doing? Good in yourself? Good. It's really hard to break into the Woodbine circuit. It's very close-knit community. It's not like uh, the U.S. where they have a bunch of different tracks that they rotate through. So for Ryan to come up here and break in so well and uh, be doing so well, and it's just, it's really good on him because it goes to show what a nice guy is how well he treats people he's got a good agent everybody looks up to him and to come and win so many races right off the bat that, that takes talent he's a, good, he's a good rider and he's doing really well here obviously during races when you're not riding you'll be watching seeing if there's other horses that you know one day you might be riding in the future so it's it's you've always just got to look around you're still like in your office work zone but um, yeah, I, I like to stick with my routine and I'll watch my races and watch the replays when I'm off. And, and then yeah, when it's time to ride again, change up, shower up, weigh and go again. Yeah, Ryan Munger is a, is a great story. He wanted to come over here from his native South Africa where he was doing well, a top 10 jockey in South Africa and Singapore, a champion rider in Zimbabwe. So here he is literally coming from across the world to ride at Woodbine. Miracle in front, silent miracle, what a beginning for Ryan Munger, he wins. Well, at the moment, you know, my short-term goal, I always said I wanted to be top 10 first season here at Woodbine and hopefully get to 50 winners. That's my, my short-term goal. Long-term goal, obviously you want to be associated with a big stable, big horses. Rome wasn't built in one day, so I have come to terms with that. That might take a, a year or two process, but Hey, you never know how the world works. The universe can be a funny place sometimes. My name is Randy Foster and I'm the athletic therapist here at Woodbine. There's two, two categories. There's the traumatic type injuries when they come off the horse, and then there's the chronic injuries, the repetitive strain injuries that all of them have. Uh, their backs and their knees are their shock absorbers. Let's do something not super painful. What I do is a lot of maintenance, a lot of prehab, a lot of trying to condition them so that they can deal with those types of, of injuries. Um, and then the other half of it, like I said, are the more traumatic injuries. So if they've sprained their ankle or if they've 
you know, broken their arm or they've, you know, had a neck injury, then it's a lot of that type of rehab. And then there's also the first aid side of it with concussion assessments and that sort of thing, small cuts and bruises. The hardest part you've got to do, I'd say, is just, you know, at the back of your mind, you've always got to think about what could go wrong. I, I don't even know if I'm surprised anymore how these jockeys recover from injuries. They go through horrific injuries and they will tell you it's not a question of if they get injured, it'll be when. I like speed. That's why I don't have no freaking sports cars, man. I, I probably would have killed myself. I, there's like no, no throttle. Is it? Let's see what this thing can do. Let's see. Champion. Gary Boulanger used to gallop with my dad and I used to always watch him and thought, man, it'd be awesome to be able to ride with that guy one day. If I had to sum up Gary Boulanger's career, we talked about writing a book one day and I said, what would you call the title of that book? And he said, The Greatest Comeback. They're at the post. Now we're going to mile three, it's in the Mac Magdalia. And we turned into this, well, it would have been the third turn, just before we turned for home and he slipped on a piece of grass. He went down, I go down, and we're laying, me and Joe Bravo were side by side. Two horses end up running me over. And I don't remember any of it. Like they just showed me film footages and you know, guys tell me, but I mean, I, I actually threw two paramedics to the ground. Um, I was bleeding out of both ears. My nose was sliced from my goggles and but with a head injury, the, my neurologist told me, like, you get into protected mode. You don't want nobody touching you. They transport me to um, Pembroke Pines West Hospital. I was uh, 30 days in a coma. And then I was three weeks doing physio rehab and cognitive stuff. It was a long battle. Migraines were hellacious for like three years. I couldn't come out of my room sometimes for three, four days. Sound light. Somebody took a picture of me with a flash, I dropped to the ground. A very trying period of my life. Didn't know what I was supposed to do then. I was like, well, what are you gonna do now? Everything was racing, so I'm like, what do you do? Like, you got a high school education? Yeah, but like, you have no trade to fall back on. You're no one in racing. And the winning rider, Gary Boulanger. This is a, someone who flatlined on a table twice after an injury at Gulfstream. He could have died from it, and yet he found a way, still don't know how, to come back and not just have a career, have a great career, a Hall of Fame career, a career that includes a, a Queen's Plate and over 3,000 wins. Uh, this is someone who loves the game, who loves the sport so much that this is what he wanted to do. And when he thought, I can't do this anymore, he somehow found a way to do it. If you're scared, don't go out. If you got any second doubt, you're gonna, you're gonna second guess or you're gonna hesitate in a situation, a race that's gonna end up hurting you or hurting somebody else. If you got any doubt about why you're there, you should have walked away. It's been uh, probably an unimaginable career. I mean, I never thought when you first start riding races like, oh, you're gonna win the Queen's Plate, you're gonna ride in the Kentucky Derby. You, like, you hope you're successful. You hope you become that kind of rider, but you never imagine it. And then when it does happen, you kind of like, you don't put it into realization until you're done with it. It is very, very, very tough game. You know, you try to have more good days than bad, but it's very hard to balance in this game and you'll have more losers than winners. And it sucks to think like that, but it's reality. You just gotta go out there and try to do your job as best as you can. Jeez, I've still got a long career ahead of me. You know, I wanna win King's Plates. I wanna win grade ones. I wanna win championships. There's a lot out there to prove and I'll wake up every day knowing this, this is what I wanna achieve in my life. It's the passion for the game. I love this game with everything. I want to see this game succeed on all levels. And I've said it already, like if I, could, if I could put this in a jar, if I could take people with me on the back of a 1,200 pound sentient being that is as driven to win, to beat its competitors with me, if I could give you that, that's what I would like. I want to give you that. What are you going to miss the most? Riding them. 
I love being on them. I do.